Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Monica. I like to post anti-MLM life and some true crime content here on this channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to see you stick around. Make sure to also like this video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the company Rodan and Fields. I will be critiquing the company along with going over quite a number of things. So of course, just as a disclaimer, this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only and just my opinions also based on the research that I've done. I did want to give a huge shout out to my friend Jessica here on YouTube. Her YouTube channel is Just MUA. She was the one that helped me out with the research on this video. So of course I have to give credit where credit is due. She is a licensed esthetician along with a certified makeup artist. So she has quite a bit of expertise in this field. I'm hoping to premiere this video. So if I do premiere it, uh, I hope that she can be in the chat as well because if anyone has any questions about ingredients or anything like that they can ask her because obviously she's an expert in that field and of course like I said before we're gonna be talking about Rodan and Fields if you don't know anything about Rodan and Fields we will go into a little bit of a background behind the company but it is a skincare company and they are an MLM business model. If you are new to this kind of content, MLM stands for a multi-level marketing. A lot of times it gets compared to pyramid schemes because of the triangle like structure that is very, very similar. And the thing with that is that the distributors and the consultants of all of these companies are the number one best customer for any MLM really. A lot of times they have to keep a PB, a lot of times they recruit people into the business opportunity. And that's one of the reasons, in my, in my personal opinion, why MLM companies don't really believe in market saturation. They don't really think that that's a thing, but it is. And the reason why these companies don't care is because these consultants are buying from them. So the consultants are their customers. They're, they don't really, I mean, I guess they're kind of employees, but not really. I mean, they have to buy the product all the time. We will go into everything from the income disclosure statements to some policies and procedures, lawsuits, ingredients, all of that kind of stuff we will get into. You might have also heard about Rodan and Fields back in February of this year, 2020, when the whole Anastasia Beverly Hills Rodan and Fields collaboration debacle. And we'll go over that as well. I did do a live stream about that, so I, I will leave that link below. But anyway, let's just get into this video. As I said before, Rodan and Fields is an MLM company. They sell skincare products, and it was founded by two women by the name of Katie Rodan and Kathy Fields, which they met in 1984 while they were studying dermatology residency at the Stanford University of Medicine. And in 1995, they came out with the product called Proactive, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard about Proactive or Proactive Solution. That's one of their products. Then in 2002, they launched Rodan and Fields. However, they would end up selling the company to Estee Lauder and then they would reacquire the company in 2007. What I find interesting is that when they reacquired the company in 2007, that's when they decided to make it an MLM structure or a multi-level marketing structure. I do want to go over the income disclosure statement first. I'm sure a lot of you are interested in seeing the income disclosure statement, especially if you're in the anti-MLM community. Before we do go over it though, a lot of people who are new to this, let me just explain it a little bit to you. So this statement is just what they make from sales or commissions or whatever you want to call it. This is not including taxes, fees, expenses, any kind of personal volume that the consultants have to keep. And personal volume is also called PV. And what that is, it's just what they need to purchase in a month, for example. So when I was in Beachbody, I had to keep a certain PV. So in order to keep that PV, I would have Shakeology on auto ship. But going back to Rodan and Fields, a lot of times with these income disclosure statements, which they are annually, these numbers that we're going to go over, it's annually, it's not in a month or anything like that. A lot of consultants of multi-level marketing companies will say, well, some people sign up as discount consultants or discount coaches or whatever the case may be because they really like the product. So they sign up as a consultant just to be able to get a discount on the products. 
But the good thing about the Rodin and Fields income disclosure statement is they separated the two. So they said that the amount of people in the company that are discount as opposed to an actual active consultant, they gave us that number. And I decided that because they gave us that number, I was going to do a little bit of math. Now, just keep in mind that these numbers are approximate when we go over the income disclosure statement. All right, I'm going to pop it up on the screen, but I'm going to read it as well. I had to print this out because I had to do some math and stuff like that, so I printed it out. So, <laughs> But we're gonna read it together. All right, so this is the 2018 income disclosure statement. I was not able to find the 2019 one, so if anyone has access to that or if anyone has a link to it, please let me know in the comment section below. Sometimes YouTube will put it into spam, but because I said that, I'll, I'll check the spam folder when, when this video goes up. I'm gonna go over a few things, but the first thing I wanted to take a look at was, it says, launched in 2002 and founded by renowned Stanford-trained dermatologist, Dr. Katie Rodan and Dr. Kathy Fields. Rodan and Fields' mission is to give consumers the best skin of their lives. But they failed to mention there that yes, they launched it in 2002, but you sold it to Estee Lauder and you didn't get the company back until 2007. So I find that interesting. But anyway, let's continue. Under the our program portion, it says, our consultants are independent contractors who have developed business management skills, cultivated relationships within the R and F community and challenged themselves to become comfortable in front of audiences. Many earn fun money and income for discretionary purchases. Some even earn more. Sorry, the fun part got me. A consultant can join for the purchase of as little as a $45 business per portfolio. Consultants are eligible to purchase products that reduce prices, create their own schedule, and have the potential to earn retail profit and monthly commissions. Remember how I always say that at best they are independent contractors, but they like to walk around and say that they're business owners and this and that, but I mean, it says it right here, you're not a business owner. And anyway, let's keep moving on. Then it says the compensation plan is based on product sales. You cannot earn income from sponsoring or recruiting team members. So keep that in mind because we're gonna go over something that's in the policies and procedures after that, but keep that in mind. I will bring it up again. They say that in 2018, approximately, the top 1% were paid more than 29,000 a year. Then they say that the top 10% were paid more than $4,955 a year. And then the top 50% were paid more than $598 annually. It says to be eligible for commissions on products, you must have monthly sales to retail customers and or personal purchases of roughly $100 worth of product measured in volume and then it has an asterisk. So what, and if you go down into the income disclosure statement, volume is determined by the consultant price of products and sometimes, but not always, is the same as the consultant price. But then it says to receive greater commissions and maintain your status, your direct customers must purchase and or your direct consultants must sell 600 in volume of products each month. Now we're gonna move on to the numbers of the income disclosure statement. If you look at the top tier of the triangle-like structure, it says that on average in 2018, that tier made 1.2 mil. But if you look at this, the percentage of paid consultants, it says 0.00%. If you look at the fine print underneath the income disclosure, it says that that represents 97 consultants of the company. Let's look at the rest of the income disclosure statement, shall we? The lowest tier, it says on average annual income for 2018, it was $325, which that makes up 61.3% of paid consultants approximately, if I did my math correctly, that is approximately 136,400 something consultants in the company. The second tier going up this triangle-like structure is on average in 2018, the, the average income was 2,342. That makes up 28.9% of the company and approximately 64,300 consultants. The next tier, $6,919 on average annual income. They make up 5.90% of paid consultants. Approximately, give or take, 13,000 consultants. 
The next one is $14,705 on average annually in 2018. Those people make up 2.80% of paid consultants, which equals out to approximately, give or take, 6,200 consultants. And if you keep going up, it just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> I'll leave it up on the screen for a little bit so you can take a look at it, but only 97 people in the company are making on average 1.2 mil. Let that sink in for a second because like I said, a lot of the times these consultants will say, oh, well, some people are signed up as discount coaches. Thankfully, with the Rodin and Fields income disclosure statement, they let us know how many are discount, how many are not. So that's how you can figure it out in the income disclosure statement. And honestly, I, I find it alarming that so little people are making money, if not, I mean, some people are losing money. Let's be honest here. The, the FTC says that 99.7% of people who start an MLM or become part of an MLM, a consultant, that they either one, don't make any money, make little money, or they lose money. So think about that. These, these are things that you should think about when you're looking at an MLM company, for example. But the next thing that I wanted to go over is some of their policies and procedures. The document is 80 pages long, I believe, is what it was all together with like the title and the table of contents and all that. So I went through most of it. I'll leave a link below, but I went through most of it so that I can kind of I guess figure out what Rodin and Fields is about because one of my old neighbors back when I lived in Jersey, she was selling Rodin and Fields. I didn't know that it was an MLM at the time. I tried it at the time. This was in like 2000, I don't know, 2013, 2014 or something like that. It didn't really do much. I mean, it, I didn't see a difference, honestly, but maybe maybe it's just me. I don't know. Or maybe it's the products. They just don't work. So we're gonna go over some of the policies and procedures because there's, like I said, a few things I wanna go over. So the first part, it talks about what you need to do in order to become a consultant or what it is that qualifies you to become a consultant. So let's go down this list. You have to be 18 years of age or older, be a legal resident of the US, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, or Guam, have a valid social security number, not be in jail or prison or otherwise confined to a correctional institution, not have ever been convicted of a felony, not be a current employee officer or director of Rodin and Fields and or its affiliates or the spouse of any of the foregoing, not be a current employee officer or director of Guthy Ranker Corporation and or its affiliates or the spouse of any other of the foregoing, you have to complete and submit a consultant application that is accepted by Rodin and Fields. You have to purchase a business portfolio, except for residents of North Dakota, where the purchase of a business portfolio is optional, which if anyone knows why that is, please let me know in the comment section below because I have no idea why, <laughs> why it is that way. You have to have a valid email address and a valid credit card. And the final thing is any proprietorship doing business under an assumed name, DBA or doing business as, must also submit a true and complete copy of its certificate of DBA if requested by Rodan and Fields. A business entity, a corporation, LLC, partnership, or trust applying to be a consultant must also comply with requirements of section 5J, which I'll leave this link below. So if you're interested, you can take a look at that section. So really, you don't have to be certified or licensed or anything like that. You don't have to be an esthetician. You can just sell these products all willy nilly. Hmm. Kind of weird if you ask me because there are people like my friend Jessica who um, they went to school for this and they are certified in this field and are able to actually give advice on skincare. But these people, they don't have to give, they don't have to go through that kind of schooling. But anyway, let's keep going. That's just my opinion. Section 3B, consultants shall not be treated as employees of Rodan and Fields for any purpose, including without limitation for federal, state, or local tax purposes or for retirement benefits. 
Consultants are self-employed, non-exclusive independent contractors who are authorized to market and sell the Rodin and Fields products in the 50 United States, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and Guam. Consultants are not and shall not represent themselves to be employees, agents, or representatives of Rodin and Fields or purchases, purchasers of a franchise or a business opportunity. So does it say right there that they shall not represent themselves as franchise owners? How many times have we heard MLM reps call themselves franchise owners or, the, or that they're basically just like a franchise? Let me talk about that for a second. If you're new to MLM and if you stumbled upon this video because you're doing research prior to joining the company, it is not a franchise. Do not believe these MLM reps when they tell you that it's it's a franchise or that it's like a franchise. While there may be some similarities, there may be some similarities, there is a significant difference between the two. Because as I said in the beginning of this video, these MLM companies, they do not care about market saturation. Whereas a franchise, for example, McDonald's, I use this analogy all the time, but let's say I'm let's say that there's a, a McDonald's across the street. Another McDonald's is not going to open up on this side of the street because they do a market analysis. They make sure that these businesses can be profitable. They do all of that to make sure that there's no market saturation in the area. Whereas with MLMs, they don't care. You can be a rep, your neighbor can be a rep, your neighbor's neighbor, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your mom, your dad, it doesn't matter. All of these people can be reps because as I said before, the consultants are the best customers in these MLM companies. The next part is section 5G. What I found interesting about this section is that, and I think that this is very important to note, and I think that this is good on Rodin and Fields part because this is something that we very commonly see in MLM companies where they tell you to recruit your spouse or put them underneath in your downline so that you can rank up or put your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister so that you can rank up. But with Rodin and Fields, they don't allow that. They say that if spouses or common law married couples both wish to be consultants, they must be registered together as a single cons consultantship, I can't say that word, under a single sponsor using a single social security number. Spouses and common law married couples may neither sponsor each other directly or indirectly, nor have different sponsors. Children over the age of 18 residing with their parents who meet all of the eligibility requirements may have their own consultantship, for information regarding this, they have a whole entire section dedicated to that. We don't see that very often. We see people highly encouraging their spouses, their, their family members, or whatever. I mean, this is talking about spouses, obviously, but we see that all the time, that these reps will say, just, just put your husband underneath, underneath you in your downline. I was encouraged to do that. People on my team were encouraged to do that. And it is to be able to rank up. I didn't do it because I'm sorry, but one, my fiance is not gonna drink shakes. Okay, number one. Number two, I'm not gonna be paying for two auto ships of Shakeology. No thanks, because I would never finish any of that in the amount of time I would be broke. Okay, let's be real here. The next part is where it talks about testimonials and what kind of claims that you can make in those particular testimonials, like when they're posting on social media or whatever the case may be. So the first thing is in section 6C, product claims. Consultants shall not make any claims or representations regarding the Rodan and Fields products other than those claims and representations found in the Rodan and Fields marketing materials. Consultants may use the before and after photos and product testimonials that Rodin and Fields publishes in support of the Rodin and Fields products. Before and after photos and product testimonials may be submitted for suggested public publication in the Rodin and Fields website. If a consultant wishes to use her or his own personal before and after pictures, the subsequent guidelines must be followed. Now. Any Rodan and Fields MLM reps that are watching this, 
take note because a lot of y'all aren't doing this. <laughs> but it says, the information shared must represent the consultant's honest opinions, findings, beliefs, and experiences from using Rodin and Fields products. The information shared must clearly and conspicuously disclose the substantiation of representations conveyed. Example, how often and how long the Rodin and Fields products were used or whether any products or treatments contributed to the results. Makeup must be removed and hair pulled back from the face. Photos must be in focus in a portrait landscape and with a well-lit plain background. The before and after pic photos must be taken under the same conditions and touch-ups and photo editing are not permitted. If a consultant wishes to use before and after photos of product testimonials of a customer, friend or family member, in addition to the foregoing requirements, the consultant must obtain permission from the person who is the subject of the photos or testimonial. How many times do we see these reps that in one picture they're smiling, the next picture they're just slightly smiling a little bit. And you can tell that they're doing it so that you can't see the lines on their faces or anything like that. Because when I smile, I have fine lines, okay? I have crow's feet, I have all of that. And, but when I have my face just normal, and when I'm surprised, see, I have these. But if I was to take a picture in me smiling and me just kind of smiling, it would look completely different. So that's something that these reps, not all of these reps know that because I see it all the time. But anyway, let's keep going. There's a little bit more under the testimonials and stuff, but I'll let you guys read that on your own time. The next portion addresses income claims. How many times have we seen these people make income claims with any MLM? It's all the time. Why do you think the FTC sent warning letters, one of which was Rodan and Fields? And of course, we will go over that a little bit later. But anyway, let's get into it. Consultants shall not make claims or representations of potential or guaranteed income or profits in connection with the program. Any amounts that consultants earn through the program are based only on the sale of Rodan and Fields products and not on the mere act of sponsoring other consultants. The FTC or Federal Trade Commission and several states have laws and or regulations that prohibit certain types of income claims and testimonials by persons engaged in direct selling or network marketing. While consultants may believe it beneficial to tell other consultants and potential consultants about their earnings or the earnings of others, such claims may have legal consequences and adversely impact Roe, Dan, and Fields as well as the consultants making the claims. Unless appropriate disclosure required by law is also made with the income claim. Obviously, you say that th it's not going to be the same for everybody. Not everybody's going to make this income. income and I honestly, if you're an MLM rep and you're talking about income claims, make sure that you attach that income disclosure statement and be very, very, very just blunt with the fact that here's the income disclosure statement. You, you might not make what I'm making or you might not be able to live the lifestyle that I'm living because here you go. We just went over the income disclosure statement. Of course, there's more in that section as well, but I'll let you guys look at that on your own. I will leave in the description box all of the sections that I went over along with the links, but this is just a brief overview of Rodan and Fields because if I kept going, this video would be over an hour long. Then on page 25, they decided to go into the etiquette on social media, so how they're supposed to act on social media. The interesting thing that I found about this is if you have been here for a while, you might remember me talking about the Anastasia Beverly Hills Rodin and Fields debacle, that collaboration that they had. And when that was happening, it was myself and a few other anti-MLM activists that were talking on Twitter about this. And quite a number of Rodin and Fields consultants came out of the woodwork and had a few choice words. So in my video about my MLM is different, if I remember, I'll leave a link to that below. But in that video, I briefly talked about the one person that commented and that was talking to us via Twitter. And she had something to say about me, which honestly, I don't care. She can say whatever she wants. But 
that's not really part of the social media etiquette, honey. So if you're watching this, you might wanna hear this next part, but it says in section 11K, social networking and social media. Rodan and Fields encourages consultants to join social networking sites, online forums, discussion groups, blogs, and other forms of internet communication to leverage the power of the Rodan and Field brand and to communicate the benefits of the Rodan and Field products and the program. Online social networks may be used to drive traffic to the websites that they have. Social networks include such sites as Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Social media sites may not be used to sell the Rodan and Fields products. Profiles a consultant generates in any social community where Rodan and Fields, the Rodan and Fields products, or the program are discussed or mentioned must clearly identify the consultant as a Rodan and Fields independent consultant. And when a consultant participates in those communities, they must avoid inappropriate conversations, comments, images, video, audio, applications, or any other adult, profane, discriminatory, or vulgar content. The determination of what is inappropriate is at Rodan and Field's sole discretion, and offending consultants will be subject to disciplinary action. So, for any reps out there that are Rodan and Field's reps, if you decide that you're gonna be all big, bad, and tough guy on social media, people can report you to the compliance department for Rodin and Fields and you can possibly get into a lot of trouble for it because this is what I'm trying to say is that a lot of MLM reps right now because of how loud the anti-MLM community is getting a lot of these MLM reps they don't know how to respond so what they do is they start yelling at people they start getting frustrated they start pe calling people names they call the anti-MLM community haters and trolls all the time which is fine I don't care but if you're going to get into an argument with someone make sure that you're careful and make sure that you're professional about it because you are the face of this company. So you have to conduct yourself in a way that is professional and is a representation of the company. So if you're gonna lash out at people and if you're gonna be an a-hole to people on social media, like how some of these people were when we were on Twitter of the dumpster fire that was Twitter that one day with the, with the collaboration, that's not okay with Rodin and Fields. Act professional, act like an adult, act like a grown up. If you can't handle the hate, then I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be on the internet. That's just, that. I'm sorry, just tough love right there. If you can't handle that, you shouldn't be on the internet because you're gonna get that on the internet no matter. And my fiance made a great analogy the other day because we were talking about trolls and, and hate comments and that kind of a thing. But he, he even said that you can post a video on YouTube, for example, of you saving a litter of puppies like rescuing them, for example, and people are still going to have something negative to say about it. And people are still going to dislike the video instead of liking the video. And that's fine. That's totally on that person. But if you cannot handle that, you shouldn't be on the internet. Next, I wanna move on to the compensation plan because I find it interesting that if you remember when I talked about the income disclosure statement and I talked about how they said in there that they don't make money off of recruiting people. But here, it's going to explain that a little bit more. So you might not make money off of that initial recruit. So let's say that me, I recruit one of my friends. I'm not going to make money off of that initial sign up. And I think some MLM companies, they do make money off of that initial sign up. I can't remember though. But I will make money off of their sales and off of what they buy. In section one introduction, this is on page 43. The compensation plan identifies the earning opportunities available to consultants and sets forth the sales and organizational requirements necessary to earn commissions and performance bonuses. So if we keep going a little bit, there are five ways that you can earn money as a consultant with Rodin and Fields. And these are the five ways. Through retail profit on sales at a marked up selling price of the products, then you also make it through consultant commissions, also known as level one commissions, through personal team commissions, through generation commission, commissions paid based on an executive consultant's qualified EC legs and EC group downline. Then also the final way is through performance bonuses that are offered by Rodin and Fields from time to time 
in their sole discretion. With that being said, I'm not going to go into the EC legs and the downline and all of that. You can look at that on your own because like I said, this video would be over an hour long if I did that. But I will leave that for you link below if you really want to know more about it. But those are the ways that you're going to earn money. So like I said, you won't earn money from that initial recruit, but you will make money off of their sales and stuff like that. So even though they say that you're not going to make money off of recruiting. So in that sense, some of those consultants may take that wording and they'll use it to their advantage when people say, well, you have to recruit people in order to make money. And they'll say, well, we don't make money off of recruiting people because you don't make money off of that initial recruitment, but you make money off of all of their sales. So keep that in mind. The next thing I wanted to go over is if you watched my video back in April of this year, 2020, if you watch my one video about how the FTC sent warning letters to some MLM companies, Bro Dan and Fields was on that list. And I'm pretty sure my friend Jessica over at Jess MUA was really excited about that. <laughs> they were on the list of the warning letters that the FTC sent because they were making income claims that had to do with um, the pandemic that we're currently in right now. There's three different examples that they put on that warning letter that we're going to get into. The first one, it says, Roe, Dan and Fields is always open for business, even during quarantine. I've been working from home for over three years now and still making money when other people aren't. Isn't it about time you found out what it is I do and how this company really works? Hashtag work from home, hashtag financial freedom. We all know about this financial freedom nonsense that they always spew, all of these MLM reps, it doesn't matter what MLM company they're a part of, but they always talk about financial freedom. And I know I've said this numerous times on my channel, but with when I was with Mary Kay, because if you're new here, I did Mary Kay and Beachbody, but when I was with Mary Kay, the way that I was recruited by my upline was she promised me financial freedom. And she said that I would be able to pay off my student loan debt. I would be able to pay off my credit card debt because I had a ton of debt at the time. So this was a way that she recruited me. They're not allowed to do that. The next example was, we all need something to fall back on when our plan A crumbles. For many people right now, the plan A is no longer providing. Given that we are all at home trying to manage this new normal, let's chat and get all your questions answered and start getting that plan B up and running, bringing in that extra income, hashtag extra income, hashtag financial freedom. The text accompanied an image with the text, quote unquote, no risk, no experience needed, and quote unquote, can be profitable immediately. Obviously, you can't do that. <laughs> the final example we're gonna go over is, during an uncertain time like this, one thing I am grateful for is residual income from my home-based business. If you're struggling and could use an extra few hundred dollars a month, why not give this a try? Hashtag residual income. And then the image that accompanied the post said, quote unquote, I have spots available on my team. If you wanna make 200, 500, or $1,000 a month, message me. I am so happy that they got that warning letter <laughs> because this is how a lot of people were able to recruit people during this pandemic because so many people lost their jobs and they have no money coming in. But here's the thing that I want people to think of because there were videos, I, I made a video, I think I made two videos regarding um, the pandemic and MLMs, but there are so many videos out there that are all dedicated to this particular topic, especially when, it, when we first started seeing it. But if you are someone who is thinking of joining an MLM right now, do you need to remember that yes, you'll be recruited into the company, you can start your own business, but here's the problem with that, is that if people are still going to be unemployed and if people are not making any money, if they don't have money coming in, how do you think that they're going to buy products from you, especially overpriced MLM products? That's something I wanted to say, but let's keep going because I want to go over the lawsuit that they have. I'll leave a link to it below. But on April 13th of 2018, a class action lawsuit for $5 million was filed against Rodan and Fields. The lawsuit was regarding their Enhancement Lash Boost Eye Serum, which at the time was going for $150 each. 
Rodin and Fields was sued because a lot of their consumers said that they endured injuries from using this serum. And these injuries included changes in iris color, drooping eyelids, excessive tearing or lid crusting, itchy eyes, and vision impairment. Those are very serious issues. I mean, okay, your iris color is changing along with drooping eyelids and, and crusties and itchy eyes and you can't, you might not even be able to see. That to me is a little suspicious. But if we keep going, the lawsuit was talking about Latisse, which is the only FDA approved eyelash enhancement product disclosed the possible side effects to their consumers. Because Rodin and Fields chose to market this product as a cosmetic instead of uh, something else, they didn't, they were not required to put this serum through the proper testing that they would have to do within the FDA. So that's kind of how they got away with it. And the use of isopropyl Cloprostinate, I'm gonna put that on the screen because I did not say that word properly, has been completely banned from use in the cosmetic products in Canada. However, that ban doesn't exist in the US. Now, since the serum didn't require the same FDA regulation as Latisse, they did have an obligation to tell their consumers of the possible side effects of using this product. The basis of the class action lawsuit is Rodan and Fields' failure to disclose the possible side effects. And because of that, it constitutes constitutes fraudulent, unfair, and unlawful marketing practices. And of course, because of the injuries that people endured during this whole entire thing. So that is something that I will also leave linked below. I do have a copy of the lawsuit itself. So if anyone is interested in that, let me know and I can send that to you as well. Or I'm sure that you can find it online. I'm pretty sure that it's somewhere online. The next thing I wanted to go over is some ingredients. I'm going to leave this one article that I got from Jessica over at Just MUA that is an unbiased review of Rodin and Fields. And this person went into full depth about the ingredients. Now, because Jessica is a licensed esthetician, I do believe that she wouldn't give me a, an article like that if it wasn't true or if it, if it wasn't or, or if it wasn't a good review for, we're just gonna say that because she has her own expert opinion on this as well. So I will leave that link below because I am not going to sit here and pretend like I know what all of these ingredients do. And that is a very, very lengthy article that goes through everything. It goes top to bottom, nitty gritty. So it's, it's a great article, but I'll leave that link below. The one, Thing that I wanted to talk about though when it comes to ingredients is something that Rodin and Fields put out and this is part of their frequently asked questions page. I will leave this link below and it's talking about some ingredients and the California Prop 65. So I didn't know about this until Jessica told me about it. What is benzophenone and octocrylene? Benzophenone is a trace chemical found in octocrylene and benzophenone cannot be removed by its entirety when octocrylene is being processed, but the level present is negligible. It does talk about how there are some kind of health risks that are associated with it. And like most natural and synthetic ingredients, octocrylene is controversial because it might be a dermal allergen to those with sensitive skin. Me personally, I have sensitive skin, so I would, I would probably have an issue with it. Also, the trace amounts of benzophenone found in octrocrylene might be a carcinogen at high concentrations. Nonetheless, all finished goods adhere to stringent regulatory requirements and undergo irritancy studies and safety testing. Moreover, in the US, the FDA has evaluated octocrylene and is considered safe for, uh, for use up to 10% in the formula. Health Canada allows a maximum use of 10% as well. So then it goes over the Prop 65 warning requirements. And benzophenone and is actually listed under the California Prop 65. So California Propos Proposition 65 
is California's Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act of 1986. Its purpose is to help California residents make informed decisions about exposing themselves to chemicals that might cause cancer, birth defects, or reproductive harm. It provides a list of chemicals known to the state of California to cause harm and requires distributors to provide warnings. High concentrations of benzophenone are known in the state of California to cause cancer. Nonetheless, the level of benzophenone found in sunscreens that contain octocrylene is negligible. It is so negligible that it is not required by law to be listed on the ingredient listings. So that's something to keep in mind. So then it says, if octocrylene does not pose a health risk, then why does Rodin and Fields have a California Prop 65 warning? Rodin and Fields opted to provide the Prop 65 warning on its products that contain benzophenone to add an extra level of protection against potential lit litigation. Prop 65 plaintiff lawyers are known to be very aggressive and will bring suit to encourage settlement, even if they have no grounds for suit. Thus, Rodin and Fields believes in protecting our customers and independent consultants and would rather invest in educating our community and making informed decisions, which is consistent with the intent of Prop 65. Well, that's a little interesting if you ask me. We're going to talk very, very briefly about the Anastasia Beverly Hills debacle that happened back in February of this year. I briefly talked about it before, but what ended up happening with this was they announced on Twitter, Rodan and Fields went on to Twitter and they talked about their Anastasia Beverly Hills collaboration with Rodan and Fields and it was for a brow product. If you don't know Anastasia Beverly Hills, they are very big in the beauty community. They are very well known for their, for their brow products. And this was supposed to be like a limited edition, um, launch, I guess you can say. And it, it was, it was just a limited edition thing. So, of course, as soon as the anti-MLM community heard about this, they got loud about it. We got loud, y'all. We got loud. And our voices were heard. What there, there wasn't... Okay, so some people thought that this was a win for the anti-MLM community. Some people didn't think it was a win. Personally, the fact that Norvina, who is the CEO of Anastasia Beverly Hills' daughter, she didn't know what an MLM was. People educated her about what an MLM structure is, how predatory it is. Unfortunately, they weren't able to do anything about the collab. It was already done. But after that happened, I think that it's good that our voices were heard. And I think that we came together. But the funny part is that after that, a lot of Rodan and Fields consultants were really upset about it. So they started painting black hearts on their faces. It was like a movement that they were trying to do. A lot of other MLM companies also, their reps or their higher ups said a few things about it, saying that it's so disheartening that so many people are against women and blah, blah, blah. Let me just say, there is nothing about MLMs that is women empowerment. Nothing. There's nothing about it that is that is part of the woman empowerment? No, no, there's nothing about it. They prey upon women, they're predatory, they have predatory behavior, and these MLM companies, they do not care about their MLM reps. They do not care. If you're making, if you're making them money, then maybe they care a little bit about you, but if you're at the bottom of the food chain, they don't care if you're losing money. They don't care because they're still making money off of you. You still have to keep a PV. If, after all of this, you still wanna join Rodin and Fields, let's go over the starter kits for them. The most expensive one is $995. The second most expensive one is $695. Then you have a $395 kit, and then you just have the business portfolio, which is $45. I'll leave links below so that you can see exactly what you can get from all of these different packages, I guess you can say. But for my final thoughts, since we're at the end of the video, obviously, my final thoughts are honestly, 
after all of this information and after looking into this a little bit more and the ingredients and the income disclosure statement and all of that, I don't know why anyone would want to join. And I mean, maybe, maybe I'm biased because I am anti MLM, but that's just how I feel about it. And I think that the MLM structure is not a good structure, that there is nothing empowering about it. They prey upon people at their most vulnerable times. And it's, like I said multiple times in this video, the MLM company doesn't care about market saturation. They don't care if you're losing money because their reps and their consultants are their best customers. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I need to go because I'm actually starting to lose my voice. I can feel it. <laughs> so if you have watched up to here, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit like, subscribe, check me out on social media, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Monica reporting to you live from a highway. Bye.